In this video, we're going to take a look at the profit and loss account in Xero, the old style report. There is a little bit of flexibility in this report, including the layout, and that's what we're going to take a look at. Let's head into Xero and look at the profit and loss account old style. Okay, we're on the reporting menu. We're at the financial section at the left and we're going to choose more reports. And we're looking for the profit and loss account, which is old style. So not the one at the top, which is the new style. We want the one here, profit and loss. It's clearly not a new report. Okay, select it. And let's look at what we can do with this report. Again, because it's old style, the flexibility is in the blue box at the top. Now, there is quite a lot of flexibility in this report and I want to go through that. So the default is when you come into this report, it's going to give you four months. It's going to give you the current month and then it's also going to give you the preceding three months with a year to date figure. So it's a profit and loss, so no surprise, we've got income, cost of sales, then we've got an expenditure ending up with a net profit figure. So what else can we do? Well, the tab we're on here is common formats, and this is the default one, current and previous three months. You can also choose year to date progress. So the year to date is from the 1st of April right up to today's date, which is the 4th of May. When we choose the year to date progress, we get three columns. Now, because it's old style, you can't add and remove columns. You just have to stick with what Xero gives you. So we've got year to date to the 4th of May and a comparison with the two years prior to that. The next option we can choose is month to date progress. So this time we're in the current month. So it's the 1st of May to 4th of May. Because we're so early in the month, there's nothing in the demo company. And then the comparison is the three months previously. So this time, we have four columns on the report. We'll have a quick look at the current financial year. And you can see that this report includes budgets. Now we're not covering budgets at the moment, so I'm not actually going to look at that one. And the same, I'm not going to look at the actual versus overall budget. So let's go back to the default when we come into this report. So if you just quickly want to come in and see what your profit and loss is for the current month, the month before, or even year to date, you can come here. Any of the figures that are in blue, you can click on them to get the details. So once we clicked on that figure, we can see what it's, the 330 is made up of. I'm just going to go back. And then one final thing on here is compare regions. There's tracking in the demo company. If we click and compare regions, it doesn't ask us anything. It just goes straight to and it actually changes the format. So it now gives you all regions. So you've got the various regions, including unassigned, and then you have a total. And Xero has done this, it's changed the date. The date now is now year to date, but the full month for the current month. So we've got two months here, April and May 2020. Let's go back to what the default is. So what else can we do on this report? Up at the top, we can choose compare periods. So when you go into compare periods, what do we have? We have the date, which is the current month, and then the reporting period is one month. So because it says one month here, this is why we've got the month ending 31st of May. What do you want to compare with? Because we're into comparing periods here. We want three previous periods. We're not going to add budget, so we'll leave that as none. So the default in here, current month, and then the previous three months. So that's the month of May. As I said in the demo data, there's nothing in there. The month of April, the month of March, and the month of February, and then the year-to-date figure. Now the year-to-date figure, you'll notice, is the same as the month of April because there's nothing in May. So we're in May 2020, so the year-to-date figure is from the 1st of April 2020. The year to date figure is included. If you untick that and update, it's now gone. So this time, now we have the month of May and the three previous. So what else can we do here? Let me go back to March, because that's the end of the financial year. And let's change the reporting period and let's choose three months. 
update and let's just explain what that does. So we're still in March, so we're to the 31st of March. The period is three months, so it tells you that here as well. So this time, when we look at the first column for March, this is the figure for three months. Then if we go to the previous period, again, this is a figure for three months. So you can see this is now given us quarterly figures. So we've got the quarter to end of June, September, December and March and the total figure for it all. If we include year to date update, remembering that year to date is for the financial year, it's no surprise that year to date figure is the same as the total. So you clearly wouldn't want both of them. Choose one and let's go back to update. So just to recap, the date is the period you want to report up to. The period is the length of the period that you want to show in each column. How many periods do you want to compare to? So if you only wanted one. So we've got a December 19 quarter and a March 20 quarter. And the total is the two of them. What else can we do? Go to more options. And you can sort, we can see that it's an account name order at this stage, so the costs are in alphabetical order. We can change that and we can make it account code order. Because we made that change, we will update. So now you've got the account code numbers appearing and they are in order. Do you want to filter? So let's say all regions, update. So we've still got the period, the comparison has gone because we're now looking at regions, but we've got January to March and we've got all the regions included unassigned and a total. If we only want to look at unassigned, for example, there you have it. Now this time, because you're only looking at one, it's given you, it's added in the comparison period. If we selected two, you get two in there. So it can be confusing, but just pay attention to what your choices are and what appears on the screen. You can always click on a figure to see what it's made up of to make sure it's what you think it is. Okay, and the third tab that we have here is one that I like, show date range. So if I was in my dashboard and I said, right, I want a profit and loss for a specific period, this is probably where I would go. So without thinking, I go to accounting, I go to reports, I choose the old style profit and loss. If I'm using it regularly, I would favorite it. I don't even look at what's on there. I go to date range and then I say, what's the range that I'm interested in? So if I wanted the full financial year before, 1st of April through to 31st of March. So April 19 to 31st of March, 2020. No comparisons and then just update. So that is giving me full year. If I wanted to compare it, to the previous year and then update. Okay, I'm thinking why has nothing happened because it said how many periods do you want and I said none, let's just choose one. So now we have April to March, so the full financial year and it shows us there as well, comparison with the year before. If we want to add further years, we can do. If we go to more options, again, if we don't like it sorted by account name, we can choose account code. If we're using different currencies, which we're not in the demo company, we can select there. So what we've done, we've still got previous financial year, comparison with the three years before, sorted by account code, and we're not filtering by region because we want all regions, all data to be shown. So if we only wanted a quarter, so January 2020 to March 2020, an update. So this time I'm going to say, I want to compare with the previous quarter. So what we have here is the quarter we've selected, January to March, and then previous three quarters. If we only want two, change it to two. So as you can see, there is a fair amount of flexibility, even on the old style profit and loss account. Okay, we're not quite finished with the old style profit and loss account yet. So on the dashboard, I'm going to accounting and because I'm going to use the old style on a regular basis, I've given it a blue star so it appears here as a favorite. I'm going to select it and we now know what to expect. We know that the default when we go in there is the current month 
and the previous three months and we untick year to date, the year to date is not shown. Right, this is what else I want to show you. We've got the usual where we can publish the report, print it or we can export it to Excel, PDF and Google Sheets. But what we also have in the old style report is we have some layout options. I'm going to briefly show you these and then what you can do is go and play around with them and see if they are going to be suitable for you. So let's go to layout options and let's say create a new layout. So this is how do you want your profit and loss to look? I'm just going to give it my initials and I can give it a description if I want to and I can make it a default if it's a layout that we want. This is the order that your accounts appear in. So if we scroll down, we've got a group here. A group is in bold and it's called non-operating income. So what can I do? I can select other revenue and then I can choose move selected account. So it's where do you want to move it to? I want to move it to non-operating income and say OK. So now we've got income that's just got interest and sales. And down in the group here, non-operating income, I've got other revenue. OK, you can see that there's an option to add a group. Let's choose that and let's add a new group and we're going to call it premises costs. Zero says, where do you want to place that group? Select the drop down and we're going to say under operating expenses. We don't want a summary, only we're going to show all the accounts. So we will say, OK. Then we're looking for our premises account. So we're going to select light power, heating, rent and rates and anything else that was related to your premises. You would select them. So you move selected accounts. Where do you want to move them to? You want to move them to the new group, Premises Costs. Once we've done that, we can see them here. And again, they're in alphabetical order. We could edit the group if we needed to or delete it if we didn't want it. But we're going to go to Save. Right, just to show you back in the dashboard, Accounting. Choose our favourite old style profit and loss. We know what it defaults to, but we're going to go to Layout Options and we're going to say Choose a Layout. Choose the new one and say apply layout. And now let's see what happens. We've got operating expenses and then we've got a group within that of premises costs. So that's a little bit about what you can do with layouts in the old style of the zero profit and loss. Have a look at it, see what you think, if it's suitable for you, if you've got a layout option that you like. Go to edit this layout, give it a sensible name and make it a default. Scroll down and save. So now from the dashboard, when we go to our profit and loss, we know that we're going to see four months appear in there and we know it's going to show up in the new style layout. My favourite place would be to go show date range and choose the date that you're interested in for looking at your profit and loss account. Compare with other periods if you need to. If I'm only looking at the month before, I would say, show me the month of April and I don't need comparisons and update. So the month end is finished. I just want to look at my profit and loss for the month of April only and I have it in the layout that I'm interested in. If I need to drill down, that figure looks a bit high. Click on it, the value, and I can see what it's made up of. And go back. So that is zero old style profit and loss.